Thank you guys for being here. I'd also like to thank the Houston Local Organizing Committee board members who are here and Chairman Tony Chase. Thank you guys for being here with us. I'd also like to make a special thank you to our partners. We have so many partners who make this possible. Um, I know I'm going to miss a couple, but I'm going to do a couple special thank yous, and that's to um, Houston First. I know there are many of you with us today. Thank you for all that you do for our community in this project. NRG Park, Leah Masaglio, I know you and your team are here with us. Thank you for being here. Um, and there's so many more that I can't, can't name everybody, but thank you for all you're doing. But I do know uh, Chief Slinker and Chief Ten are here, so HPD, thank you for all that you do for our city. Um, at this time, I have the honor to introduce Patty Smith, a friend and colleague at the Harris County Houston Sports Authority to help get us going. It's not often Holly will say honor when she's introducing me, so I'm going to take it. But um, yes, I am Patty Smith. I'm so excited to be here today. Um, it's not every day that we get to talk about all the excitement that leads up to hosting a world-class event like the Final Four. So uh, first, I will thank Holly for honor, saying the word honor to me. But really, let's give it up for Holly. She's working so hard with her entire staff um, to not only put this day on, but the, um, all the things that go with Final Four. I know a lot of you today, we're going to kind of give you a lot of information, a lot of cool stuff, and uh, you will want to probably share it on your network, post it on your social networks. Uh, check out our hashtag there, MFinal4, and our, um, our social media handles. Uh, we'll also distribute some ready-to-publish content with pictures and, and uh, copy uh, that will be available to you after the press conference today. Uh, as Holly mentioned, we do have a few special guests from the community and friends of the NCAA here today that we're going to hear from. And with that, I'd like to start with Senior Vice President of Basketball at the NCAA, Dan Gavitt. Thank you very much, Patty. What an awesome turnout this morning. That is such a special place. You know, the NCAA is just thrilled to be back in Houston, a tremendous host city. Of course, Houston is no stranger, no stranger at all to hosting the national championship. Uh, three other times previously, Houston has hosted the men's final four in 1971, in 2011, in 2016. 2023 will make the third time in just the last 12 years that the NCAA will crown its men's basketball national champion in this great city. And we at the NCA, along with the local organizing committee, are working hard to do it bigger and better than ever before this year. Houston has always been a city of firsts, from space exploration to energy to being the frontiers of medicine. And the same goes for each time the national championship has been hosted in Space City. In 2023, we already know that this event will make history with its host institutions. It will mark the first time the event will be hosted by four Division I schools. Houston Christian University, Rice University, Texas Southern University, and the University of Houston. We appreciate so much our fine host institutions, some of whom are here with us this morning, all the work that you've put in to preparing for April Final Four. Of course, the local organizing committee, city partners, board members, as recognized earlier, media, all of whom have worked incredibly hard getting set up what will be a very successful world-class event in April in Houston. Today, we are here to celebrate all of the free and low-cost events that will surround the men's Final Four, which will allow Houstonians and visitors alike to be part of the fun, whether or not attending semifinal or championship games. And a bit later, we'll also hear about this site we're at, the Blue Triangle Center. It is the recipient of the legacy project presented by Degree, and that brings with it great significance. Please look out also for a tip-off announcement on February 22nd in Dallas, where we celebrate what's all to come in that city when they play host to the women's Final Four. And before we dive into the rest of the program, a very special message from Mayor Sylvester Turner, who wanted nothing more than to be here with us today, as he has been at every step of the way from the bid process to selection. No one's a greater supporter of the men's Final Four than, than Mayor Turner, and we have a special video from him this morning. Hello, Houston. Dan hit the nail on the head. 
This tip-off celebration for the men's Final Four ancillary events is something I have been looking forward to for months. You know why? Because we are talking about events that are created for the enjoyment of our community members. The NCAA is corporate champions and partners, the local organizing committee, Harris County Houston Sports Authority, the City of Houston Police Department, the Houston Fire Department, and so many others have worked hard for months to organize events that will be fun, safe, and memorable for all ages. All Houstonians know that we are a city of people who rally together, and the men's Final Four coming to town is something we should all celebrate. I may not be there today due to travel commitments for city business, but you can be sure that I'll be counting down the days to the excitement coming to downtown Houston and beyond. See you there? I sure hope so. Well, thank you again. Thank you to Mayor Turner. Thank you also to Holly, Rachel, Carla, the entire team that we are so blessed and fortunate to work with. We really appreciate incredible turnout this morning. Look forward to seeing you later. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dan. And uh, thank you to the mayor. Um, you know, one thing about Mayor Turner that we don't always realize is he's not just the mayor of the city. This guy is a sports fan, and we appreciate his support, his staff support, and everything we do to put Houston on the map as a world-class sports city. Um, Houston's no stranger to playing host to the men's Final Four and all the ancillary events that comes with it. With me here today are a few Houstonians who will tell their personal tales being part of the events uh, in the past, both in 2011 and in 2016. Panelists, as I say your name, give a wave so everybody knows who you are. We've got Holly and India McKelvey, Jackie Sanchez, Nate Kwan, and Sarah Pepper. And the first event we'd like to introduce is the Final Four Fan Fest presented by Capital One to take place at the George R. Brown on March 31st to April 3rd. India, you and your mom attended together uh, in 2016. How would you describe this event? Celebrity and athlete appearances, autograph signings, entertainers, and a lot more. What I remember about FanFest was meeting actor Miles Brown and playing all the games that they had. What was your favorite game? Uh, so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, Holly, uh, what drew you and India to FanFest presented by Capital One back in 2016? I love the idea of being in the center of all the excitement, even though we weren't attending the games. Um, but it was a totally immersive family experience, and we had a ton of fun. Um, all right, thank you guys for sharing that. And Houstonians should know that Capital One card holders, men's Final Four ticket holders, and kids under 12 can get into the Fan Fest for free. Those 13 and older can um, get $8 pre sale tickets starting today at ncaa.com backslash men's final four. In fact, the first 500 people who visit the site today and use the code tip off, T-I-P-O-F-F, -F, will also get a free ticket. Uh, the Reese's Men's Final Four Friday is another event that is not to be missed. It will take place at NRG Stadium on March 31st, beginning at 10 a.m. You want to save the date on your calendar now. Nate, you were at the Final Four in 2016. Tell us about that event. Yeah, so when I went out to Energy Stadium for the men's Final Four Friday, I remember thinking to myself, wow, this is an actual basketball court where the Final Four will be held. And I got to see all the Final Four teams get a practice as if I were a VIP. And it was, was also really cool was just getting to see the uh, an NABC All-Star Game, which was really cool. And overall, it was just an awesome experience. And I've got here in my notes that through sheer luck, you also got to be a ball boy at the Reese's Men Final Four Friday? Yes. Okay. How was that? It was a fun experience. I did make a, a couple bad calls, but um, <laughs> um, but yeah, it was fun. Well, what's cool about this event is you don't have to pre-register. It's free. It's open to the public. All you have to do is show up on Friday, March 3rd. And then the next event I want to talk about is for all the youth in Houston, age 16 and under. Um, the Men's Final Four Dribble, presented by Buick. Jackie, how does this event work? Um, so I was at the Dribble in 2011, and essentially everybody would get an NCAA-branded basketball and t-shirt and dribble mile-long course. Um, there's thousands of basketballs everywhere, and some people think it's a race. It's not. Just have fun with it. Um, and then you get to get into FanFest for free. 
free, free, free. I sound like Matcher's Mac. Um, uh, an entry to the Final Four dribble is free with registration at the NCAA.com backslash men's Final Four starting today, but space is limited to the first 3,200 registrants in that, so get on that one quick. And last but not least, this one's for all music fans out there, March Madness Music Festival is a three-day music festival. It's also completely free at Discovery Green, March 31st to April 2nd. And Sarah Pepper, what can you tell us about this musical extravaganza? Well, if you love music and you love live music, you love both sides of this. One, it's big names in music. I saw Panic at the Disco, Maroon 5, and Pitbull. Basically, I know, right? I did the same thing. Love Pitbull? Me too. They get these huge names, and it's free. And if you add up any one of those concerts individually, those tickets are in the hundreds. This is a free event for you to be able to come and enjoy. And even the people that don't play basketball get to be a part of this large sporting event in Houston and say they were part of the Final Four, like Patty just said, for free, free, free. But you need to make sure you get there early because you want to be there in time to get really good seats and really good vantage points. But it's an amazing, amazing festival. Yes. It is. I actually paid all those hundreds of dollars to see Pitbull up in the woodlands. So to see him down there is awesome. Um, here's something else you can do today at the website on March Madness Music Festival section. You can sign up and get a notification when the talent is announced. So you can be the first to know that. Um, you'll know who they are and how to register for that free access. Um, all fans will need to pre-register through the March Madness Music Festival registration site in order to attend. More information will be provided in the coming weeks, which is why it's so important to sign up for those alerts. Updates will also be provided on the website as well. Uh, one more event that's coming to the Final Four my, is the Final Four Miler. It's an epic race on Saturday, April 1st that takes participants through a scenic route along Allen Parkway. You can head to ncaa.com men's final four. I'm going to say that a lot, aren't I? Right now to be notified when registration opens on February 1st, plus you'll get a special code for $10 off and be the first to know the beneficiary organization. And finally, those going to NRG Stadium for the semifinal and championship games should make plans to head to the stadium to attend the men's final four tip-off tailgate. Go early. Um, that's presented by Nissan. Fans can enjoy free team pep rallies, musical performances, basketball-themed games, plus food and beverage. All right, thank you to all of our panelists. We're looking forward to thousands of Houstonians making memories with um, all of our ancillary events to come. And here's one more element to get you excited about what's to come. You may recognize the voice. Um, he's the voice of NCAA Division I's basketball, the great Jim Nance. Houston will host the men's Final Four from March 31st to April 3rd. The event will be returning home to the city where some of the most memorable games in the history of the tournament took place. Bringing fun and excitement to fans of all ages. The fun tips off with the NCAA Men's Final Four Fan Fest, presented by Capital One. A spectacular display of interactive games, special celebrity and athlete appearances in every corner of the George R. Brown Convention Center, and for everyone to enjoy. And that's just the beginning. The March Madness Music Festival, presented by AT&T, Capital One, and Coca-Cola, turns Houston into the hottest ticket in the country with a three-day concert series featuring some of the biggest acts in music today. Absolutely free with registration, live from Discovery Green. The day before the semifinals, Reese's Men's Final Four Friday and Reese's NABC All-Star Games take place. Each of the Final Four teams will take the court at NRG Stadium for a day of open practices. A rare chance to see top student athletes practicing close, real close, and free for everyone. The Men's Final Four Dribble, presented by Buick, is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for kids 18 and under to be given an official NCAA basketball to dribble along a route through Houston's magnificent downtown. And then, of course, the pinnacle. The top four teams face off in the most anticipated college basketball games of the year. The competition, the crowds, the schools, the buzz. 
the madness. It all takes place here. Game on, Houston. Game on. Awesome. Well, if that doesn't get you up for Final Four, nothing will. What an amazing look at what is to come March 31st to April 3rd. Uh, joining me now is Chris Reynolds, the chairman of the Division I Men's Basketball Committee. Let's give him a big hand. Chris, we've heard so much um, about the commitment that the NCAA has made to education, um, specifically student Athletes are student first. Can you tell us a little bit about what's happening on the education front and what we can expect leading up to the Final Four? Absolutely, and thank you. The NCAA, the Houston Local Organizing Committee, has done an outstanding job of championing education during the road to the men's Final Four. In August, the college course titled The Business of Majoring Sporting Events launched in collaboration with the four host institutions Dan introduced earlier. And you know, those experiences are great. Game changers for students to aspire to work in sports, but college students aren't the only ones that are going to be a part of this. You've got coming up the read of the Final Four and soon to launch March Madness Syllabus Challenge, giving the younger students the opportunity to experience how fun learning can be. Can you tell us what to expect for some of these younger ones? Absolutely. The March Madness Syllabus Challenge is an opportunity to engage fifth grade students in the Division I men's basketball tournament by incorporating academics and life skills into a virtual daily program during the month of March. These 15 minute micro lessons are curated to mix math, science, social studies, and language arts with the March Madness Tournament. An amazing opportunity to kind of focus on that core curriculum. Um, I know teachers are integral in that. Where can teachers kind of sign their kids up for this? Absolutely, teachers inter interested in the March Madness Syllabus Challenge can sign up today on ncaa.com forward slash Men's Final Four. The challenge takes place March 6th through the 31st with daily videos available to watch live or on demand. And another initiative that's also taking place along those same lines, kind of in the tournament form and bracket style, is the Read to the Final Four program. This program launched for schools this past September on International Literacy Day, which was perfect because the main goal of the program is encouraging students to foster a love of reading at this crucial time in their lives. Absolutely, Patty, and I think we have some participants in the Read to the Final Four Challenge here this morning. Do we? Give yourselves a big round of applause. Stand up, guys. Stand up for everybody. You guys are reading your- And let everybody see you. Turn around, yeah, let everybody around. see you. These students, along with 17,000 students across the greater Houston area, are about to enter the bracket portion of the competition as they compete for with 185 schools across 11 different districts. To date, all of the students have read more than 21.6 million minutes. Awesome. It's incredible. 21.6 million minutes. Now, over the course of the next few weeks, you guys are going to hear a lot about the road to the Final Four and that we're gonna crown a champion right here in Houston. But as chair of the men's basketball committee, I'm declaring that these are the champions that we're gonna crown. So give yourselves a big round of, you guys are champions. Come on now. These students have done a great job all year long and the, uh, and the key difference this year is the literacy tour program that has been developed by the local organizing committee and a group of inspirational individuals reading with a rapper. Dorita Hatchett, Senior Director of Community Relations, is here to tell us a little bit more about this today. Thank you, Chris. And thank you, Ms. Motu, for bringing your students out today. An important component to this year's Read to the Final Four program is the Literacy Tour, which was designed to show students that learning can be just as fun as some of their favorite activities. We visit schools with different activations and stations, such as a figurative language module, virtual reality. We let them create books, color Final Four logos. Um, and then we also do games and trivia that promote learning and basketball skills. We also incorporate special guests from local celebrities and sport legends to read during our interactive story time. But one thing that the kids get really excited about is when we bring in our next person who wrote this song, especially for our literacy tour. 
Today, as part of our partnership with Reading with a Rapper, we have artist Buddy Rowe performing an original song developed to incorporate metaphors, similes, and other parts of speech. This is just a peek at some of the fun that more than 1,500 students have had during our literacy tour. Stand up. Stand up. Hey, stand up. Hey, get hey. up. Stand up. Yes, he does. Hey, stand up. Front four. Hey. Hands up. Houston, Hands Texas. up. Hands Let's up. Go. Three, hey. two, one. I got off the board. Got off the board. I saw they was running. I said that I'm coming. Just give me the torch. Just hey. give me the torch. The way hey. that heavy don't matter. I'm ready. I do it for sport. I do hey. it for sport. They tell hey. me you got it. Look, I've been watching the body of court. Hey, hey. you could. It's not for the torch. Just hey. Let's go. I got off the board. Got off the board. I saw they was running. I said that I'm coming. Just give me the torch. Give me the torch. The way that it's heavy don't matter. y'all. My name is Buddy Rowe. Thank y'all for having me. Let's give it up. Nobody wants to hear me anymore after that. Uh, is my mic on now? Yes? Okay, let's give it up for Buddy Rowe. programs and initiatives during our time together today, but there's still one more that we have not zoomed in on, and that is the leg <laughs> much Am I off? See, I messed up a word and they shut me off. <laughs> um, each year, the NCAA commits to leaving a legacy in the men's and women's Final Four host cities, and this year, Blue Triangle Community Center is the beneficiary of the legacy project presented by Degree. Chris? Can you share a little bit more about Blue Triangle and why it's this year's legacy project presented by degree recipients? Absolutely, Patty. The Blue Triangle was first founded as a YWCA in 1919 to provide young women and girls a safe place to meet, learn, and recreate. In 1998, the YWCA was in danger of closing due to a loss of funding and a great group of women who saw the value and benefit it provided to the community, banded together to purchase the land and establish the Blue Triangle Community Center. This year, the 
degree will renovate the facility with crucial updates that will have the Blue Triangle impacting lives for years to come. Here to share more about the Legacy Project site are Joanne Scott, Managing Director of the Division I Men's Basketball Committee at the NCAA, and Miss Charlotte Bryant, founding member of the Blue Triangle Multicultural Association. Let's give a big Houston round of applause for Joanne Scott and Miss Charlotte. Thank you, everybody, and I will say to you, it is an honor to be sitting next to Miss Charlotte here today. And um, I just want to ask you a couple questions. The first one would be, as we are sitting here with this legacy project presented by Degree, um, for those of you who don't know, there's going to be a new floor. There's going to be new basketball hoops. There's going to be some new basketballs. There's going to be a lot of new equipment. And I would just like to kind of wonder what you're thinking about that and how you're looking forward to it. Oh, it's just so exciting. All of my youngsters are gonna love it. They are bad enough when they just see my car park out in front and run in here to play. But now, with everything being brand new, there's even more excitement. And I hope some of these young people will come as well. Awesome. Okay, so since 1919, maybe share with the group here some of the programming either here with basketball, I saw the swimming pool, which is beautiful. So maybe give everybody a little history lesson on um, you know, what has transpired in this uh, lovely facility. Well, for many years, young people of my color had only a few places to go, but this was one of them. So consequently, they were always welcomed here. Young people come in, they think they're coming for cookies and for uh, drinks, but we shove their homework in front of their faces <laughs> as soon as they get here. And so they've learned how to leave the books in the lockers and come over without them. But you know what? Now that we have technology, we have a way now of bringing technology forward and they still have to do that homework first. So in this place, we try to teach not only good sportsmanship in our play, but also good character development in our play. Because it's, it's very important we learn to treat others as we would have them treat us. Don't you agree with that, young, young people? Yes, absolutely. That's very, very true. So that's what we do for, we, uh, we don't mind being called ancient, but it still works. It still works. Well, in addition to basketball, our young people learn how to improve, the, in, improve, the, improve their reading skills, which is what you're doing, and also their math skills, because this is a world of math. In addition to basketball in this gym, we have little boys and girls in their scouting come in and do their various, uh, I think they call them merit badge, merit badge work. In, in this very room. So it's always exciting to see them put on their little uh, competition here. In addition to that, we have Breakfast with Santa, first Saturday in, De in December every year. Three to 400 young people get two toys, not just one. When they come here, they find their nourishing breakfast that's cooked by one of the fraternities and they have a wonderful program that we put out and they do a lot of dancing. But then they see Santa and they choose their own two toys that they like, put on by another fraternity that we call the Divine Nine Group that makes everybody happy. So this, this room gets a lot of activity. Then Kwanzaa comes right after Christmas and we teach each other the skills of Kwanzaa for the family. So we do try to meet a need for the community and every phase of life that would make not only parents happy, but grow up young people to be wonderful citizens in this community. That's um, outstanding. And I would say to everyone here, this project begins today. Um, as soon as we uh, uh, depart today, the, the, the projects begin. And I, uh, we will be back here in March. I believe it's around March 22nd. And um, take a good look around because when we come back in March, you will see a renovated facility. Again, the uh, Legacy Project uh, presented by Degree. 
Uh, we hope you all come back and, um, and uh, see the new facility on March 22nd. And thanks again, Ms. Charlotte, for uh, telling your story. And thanks for everyone else for being here today. Thank you so much, Ms. Charlotte and Joanne. Give it up for them once again. Great job. I also want to acknowledge a couple of city council members who have entered since we began. I want to thank you for being here. We always appreciate your support. Piece that will go into the space that uh, we were just talking about will be unveiled on March 22nd, and it's a gift from the Houston and I Committee that is being finished as we speak. And before leaving today, I encourage you to check it out. Uh, Rwanda-born and Houston-based ba artist Anj Hills was commissioned to create the piece that honors 50 women in the celebration of the 50th anniversary of Title IX. Um, a few of the women are in the house today, uh, including uh, Ms. Charlotte and Joanne Scott, Janice Burke. Y'all really are getting tired of hearing from me. I'm going to say those again because this is important. This is celebrating the 50th anniversary of Title IX and kind of honoring and remembering 50 great women in Houston sports, um, including some of the people that are here, Ms. Charlotte and Joanne, uh, Janice Burke, the CEO of the Harris County Houston Sports Authority, Holly Kesterson, who's running all of this, uh, Leah Mastaglio, who we've talked about, Gretchen Shear from the Rockets, and Alex Singer. So congratulations, um, Anj, amazing work, um, just a, an amazing concept, and some amazing women on that. Um, before we part, I want to take a moment to mention the reason why we've asked you all to wear sneakers. Um, next week, January 23rd to the 29th, is the American Cancer Society's Coaches vs. Cancer Suits and Sneakers Week. While you're watching the games, you'll see your favorite coaches across the nation suiting up, wearing their sneakers to promote cancer, the Cancer Society's mission to end cancer as we know it. By ensuing, you have the most up-to-date information of the cancer screening right for you and your loved ones. Finally, I leave you with this. Houston is the fourth largest city in the United States and the most diverse. Come on, kids. It's one of the most entrepreneurial cities anywhere, and we are so proud to host the Men's Final Four and show off who we are. So I want to thank you to everyone for being here today as we continue the excitement that is building towards National Championship Week. All eyes will be upon us, and we are just really anxious to show it all off and put on a great event. Please visit, for the last time I'll say it today, ncaa.com backslash men's final four for more information about everything we talked about today. Uh, media or anybody else that needs it will be offering photo opportunities and some time to talk with Dan Gavitt and Chris Reynolds. Um, in the room adjacent, we have lunch for all. Speakers, stay in place um, as Jalen will help coordinate some of this stuff. And as is tradition with all Final Four, we leave you with one shining moment. We've been doing this thing a lot of years. It never lets us down. March Madness continues. We're not waiting for the madness to arrive. It's obviously already in full swing. This is the moment that these kids have dreamt about, trying to continue their March Madness dream. There's an extra level of excitement. You can feel it all around the country. The ball is there you are, you're running for your life, you're a shooting star, and all the years, no one knows, just how hard you want, rejected by Hawkins, but now it shows, in one shining moment, it's all on the mind, in one shining moment, they're frozen in time. Time is short, and the road is long, in the blinking of an eye, that moment's gone, and when it's done, when all you lose, you always get your best, cause inside you know, that in one shining moment, you keep inside. And the music is still playing for Coach K's. Last dance. Feel the beat of your heart. Feel the wind in your face. It's more than a contest. It's more than a The call of the Hawks can be heard all the way to San Francisco.
Francisco. This miracle run continues for St. Peter's. The Peacocks make history. Just another reason you've got to love March. The final chapter will be written at the final four. When all lose, you always need your friends. Cause inside you know. championship and a big time play they needed a jolt they got one kansas completes the biggest championship comeback Thank you everyone for coming. Thank you everyone for coming. Um, as a reminder, we do have lunch in the room next door and we will start with photos of our speakers. Um, and thank you all again.
Check, check. 